Hello, and welcome to A Slice of Pie Tech. Now you may be wondering, why is the tech part added to the end of this title? And the answer is because I've actually split up Slice of Pie Tech and Slice of Pie Gaming into two separate videos. Analytically, you guys honestly have been clicking tech stuff and watching tech stuff more than anything gaming. I post a gaming video, it gets two views. I post a tech video, it gets 50 views. And you guys have essentially voted with your clicks. And because of that, I've decided to officially spin off all of my gaming stuff into its own channel called Greater Than Pi Gaming. And personally, if you want to see that content, go ahead and head over there. If you're only here for the tech stuff, well, honestly, like, it's pretty clear that a lot of you guys are here for the tech stuff. And personally, it makes a lot of sense to do it this way because the YouTube algorithm actually really hates channels that switch all over the place, I have found. So, without further ado, hello and welcome to Greater Than Pie's Slice of Pie Tech. How is everybody doing today? I hope you're doing great. Honestly, like this week was a little light on the channel, but not intentionally. I actually had a video that I was gonna put out yesterday, but then I was like, but then it's gonna be on top of Slice of Pie and really do I wanna put a video on top of a video? No. So I have a, I have things on in the works coming. Um, you guys actually have been really enjoying the Razer motherboard video, which is in that case right over there. And as you have requested, you can see a couple of green eyes peering in the background. That is because Snakey, Snakey's been in the background officially. Like I moved Snakey to be visible because you guys are asking for more snack and more snack I will give you. But uh, that aside, um, the next videos coming up are actually pretty interesting. I have the Razer Huntsman Analog, which we talked about on Slice of Pie. And I also have a really weird and interesting Razer RGB controller that's in that system now. Uh, I posted a picture of it working. Um, it's really, really interesting. So. Uh, if you're not subscribed, get subscribed for that. Let's start talking about the tech news because we got some pretty cool stuff. Lee and Lee had their digital expo and um, we got some interesting things. Now Lee and Lee is not a company that releases a lot of cases a year. They tend to focus on just a few really well-made cases every single year. And last year it was all about the O11 Dynamic Mini. This year, they're actually going back and making the O11 Dynamic Evo, which is an evolved version of their current case. Der Bauer did completely take it apart. It has some really interesting features. For example, the GPU can be mounted where the distribution plate goes normally, which is a very unique place to put it. Not only that, there's also dual front loading hot swappable hard drives, a door that reveals the power button, and just so many weird oddities to this case, including an entire back that is nothing but mesh. It's very different for Lee and Lee, and honestly would actually really improve the overall cooling performance of the already kind of impressive O11 Dynamic. And honestly, it's good to see that they're continuing to evolve and develop this case. Though, speaking of cases that they collaborated with people, they collaborated with Dan Case to make a new case. Now, Dan Case is actually known more primarily for the ITX scene because what this one particular individual does, he designs incredibly compact, but extremely well-designed mini ITX systems. And Lee and Lee has actually decided to take those fundamentals and build their own. And honestly, the case itself doesn't look bad. It looks like it's very well optimized for airflow and using an AIO in order to make sure that you can cool your processor effectively. It doesn't look bad. And personally, I do, like how it looks and it is done in collaboration. So full credit where credit is due. That being said, they do also have another mini ITX system. This one is an interesting two-tone one with a tempered glass top, mesh sides and a two-tone front. Honestly, the, the look of it is very striking, but much like hardware Canucks, the ones who are actually able to get a good look at it said, 
the uh, tempered glass is a bit of an odd choice, especially because the only thing you'll be seeing is maybe the bottom of your radiator and your cable management, which is not exactly the best way to, well, show off your system. They also are releasing this behemoth, um, and when I say behemoth, it really is a behemoth. The build that I saw for this is just absolutely ridiculous. And honestly, it, it gives this case a run for its money, which is the uh, fractal, um, it's the fractal defined seven XL. Like it gives that thing a run for its money in size. And honestly, I could see some pretty awesome super builds. They did call it a super tower, so they're not trying to market this for most people to buy. They also are releasing a couple additional uni fans. Uni fans were extremely popular last year, and now they have some with even subtler RGB. That being said, it does look nice. The only problem, and the only reason I haven't been using them, is because they don't really sync to everything. Granted, I think Lee and Lee is on the list of companies that can sync to Razer Chroma which is important because I've got that Chroma build that I'm working on. Now we got a bit of an odd story. Now it's no secret to all of us in the community that the GPU shortages have really sucked and it hasn't been getting better because crypto mining has become popular again. And the last time that happened, well, we got completely screwed last time by it. Now Nvidia did last time work with AIBs to launch mining only versions of their cards. And they're doing it again, and they're trying to make it seem like they're the good guys in this situation, and I'm kind of on the fence, because technically, if what they're saying is true, and that these GPUs would not make good GeForce cards, yes, but at what point, like the miners have such a high demand, at what point do you start allocating gaming GPUs into that stack? And the miners are gonna buy gaming GPUs anyway. If they can't get enough of these CPM cards, they're not just gonna stick to their own thing. They're gonna come over and start buying from the normal GPUs, the normal uh, RTX cards. So it, there's not really much of an incentive for them to do this. And to be completely honest, I think Linus put it best. Nvidia is making an e-waste card that sells to a single demographic that will discard it without any thought. And they can't be used secondhand because even though, you know, it might alleviate a little bit of stress on the normal card market, it still will never meet the secondhand market. So I'm gonna leave a link to his discussion about it. Personally, I've kind of been on the fence about it. Like silicone is limited. Like production is limited. How do these cards fit into everything? I don't even know. I, I can't see behind the scenes, but to me, it looks like Nvidia is making money the way that they, like they're just aiming to make money. And that's what a company does. Like Power Color is releasing another Liquid Devil card in collaboration with EK. This one though is for the 6900 XT. I kind of want it for the 6800 because the 6900 is a little expensive, but that's gonna make an expensive card even more expensive. That being said, it actually makes a lot of sense to liquid cool these AMD GPUs because they actually have a lot of headroom for overclocking. And that headroom definitely uh, will show in a more expensive liquid cooled card. Speaking of liquid cooled AMD GPUs though, Sapphire is releasing a, a line that they haven't released in a very long time. It's the Toxic line. This one is for the 6800 XT though. And uh, it comes with an AIO. Interesting. I, I personally don't buy the AIO cards because I still have to buy a water block anyway. But uh, cool nonetheless. I mean, probably literally cool. And uh, I remember the first Toxic card that I had ever seen. It was like five years ago. And I think that was the last one they actually made. So yeah, pretty cool. And then a final bit of AMD GPU news. It does look like we're going to be getting the 6700 XT either March or April. <laughs> there are two competing rumors on which one we're going to be getting it in. I'm gonna say April because we haven't heard anything yet. I think we'll hear about it in March and then it will come out in April uh, because that's typically Nintendo. That is typically AMD's launch pattern. They give us a month in advance. Um, as I said, hopefully the 6700 XT will alleviate some of the pressure in the market. I highly doubt it though, because crypto miners are going crazy. 
Razer is up to something. I think they're releasing a new webcam. I think so, because that's kind of like the, the what I got from the trailer. But it could be a camera, <laughs> to be completely honest. Like, it looks... <sighs> It's got like the ring that's around, like the lens that I'm using for this camera is very, very visible, that kind of style of ring. And if they are making a camera that's really weird, but also not off brand, like if they're making it specifically as like the streamer camera with like video functionality where you just plug and play, not a bad idea. And the idea of using an official camera versus a webcam does work. Um, because you know, bit rates and all that crazy stuff where webcams often struggle, cameras like this one can easily be mounted to a desk. So, I mean, there, there's evidence for and against, it's just this really quick trailer. Uh, we'll find out in like three days though. So, which I think that means Tuesday. It's either Monday or Tuesday, the, the 23rd, whatever date that is. So we'll find out soon. I am personally interested because they've been in on a weird streak with like really interesting things that I've been picking up a lot. ASRock finally did it. You know the gears on the Tai Chi motherboards? Well, they made one that moves now. I actually love that, to be completely honest. I like the Tai Chi style. I would wanna do a full steampunk build if I were going to do a Tai Chi motherboard in anything that isn't the Razer Edition Tai Chi motherboard, but Personally, I really do like the idea of the gears actually moving. I think it looks cool. It's a little useless, a lot of useless, but you know what? <laughs> you do you. <laughs> that, that's, that's how I, I look at it. And then finally, um, in an AMA with uh, the director of Oculus or actually Facebook Reality Labs, we found out that the Oculus Quest might be capable of doing 120 Hertz, which is awesome. But there's a big old but in this one. The quest is complicated because believe it or not, you don't actually see the full refresh rate per eye. The way that the quest actually works is it uses an alternating uh, pattern in order to display everything. And it's difficult to tell if the refresh rate that they are referring to is each eye together or just a single eye. And it's actually been something that in my review of the Quest has been kind of difficult to pinpoint because technically speaking, if it is, it's actually already doubling that frame rate in order to actually make it work. And it's more like 240 Hertz with each eye together and then separate it into 120 Hertz. But that still might not be the case because you never know. And the main thing is like, it it will help. Like 120 Hertz could be really awesome. At that point, spec wise, it would match the Valve Index. But in a side by side comparison, you might find that the Quest is not really there necessarily. Granted, it would have a lot less ghosting. The dual eye thing does actually have a noticeable difference on ghosting. So. That's where we're gonna end it today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you wanna see the gaming news, like there's a video right over here for you guys to click. Um, that is, that, it's this show except gaming. Same me, same time, same, same day even. But uh, yeah, I still don't know how to end videos. Wolfie, out.